Okay, uh, we have discussed the this is limits at infinity. Okay. I think the the basic concept or the idea is just that uh, if limit approaching some functions has x approaching to infinity, and it will uh, the fa the results will be just an in uh, just a uh, some numbers L, okay. and we can also uh, use the, uh, it can be positive infinity or uh, negative infinity. Okay. So, or we can write here uh, as negative. This is from uh, interval negative infinity to some some a. Okay, let me just take you to uh, some typical example on solving a limit okay. so if we have some functions that is a limit um, as x approaching infinity uh, let's say we have this is x plus 3x squared Say we have that. In less than five seconds, we can solve this problem if you. Uh, First, looking at the function and looking at the um, the power, the power on on the variable. Okay. So, let let me just show you this step. And if you have uh, maybe if you encounter this problem again in the future, you can solve uh, less than than five seconds. So, if we have this, then the first thing we are going to do is. We need to define with the the highest uh, variables, in which in in this case we will have the highest variables is if you look look here, it's x squared, but it's having a zero, so it's just just x. Right? It's the same thing here, it's just x, right? So we can divide each one by x. We can write them as inside the, the uh, square root. Then this will be x squared. This will be, um, let me just write in terms of 4 minus 1 over x. Okay. So we can write limit as x approaching infinity. And inside this, we have 1 over x plus 3, and then it uh, defined limit as x approaching infinity, or uh, let me divide this becomes 2, okay, oh, I think I haven't said about the 1 over x, but let me just, just take this approach first, so this will be
limit x approach infinity plus limit x approach infinity okay now we need to define this first this will be equal to zero I think I haven't write about that. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Now, to get the evaluations, let me just go through. So consider uh, so consider y is one over x. Okay, that is our uh, functions. If you look here, that when you have limit as x approaching infinity of this one over x, which means going infinity is going there, going to the right. Okay. If you look closely, this will turns out to be going to have at y equals zero. Right? This is y equals zero, and it's going to touch this y equals. So y equals zero will be the asymptote, right? So y equals zero, if we write here, y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote. So when we have the limit, as x approaching to the right, going infinitely, infinitely large, large, large number, it will going to be zero. We can also take some some small proof from if we take the 1 over 100, 1 over 1,000, and you increase the numbers and becomes really, really large. And it will have, like, for example, this is 0 0.01, and this is, will be 0 0.001. And this one will be 0, 0, 0 something. So the more larger you have, the more number you have on the denominator, the results will be getting closer to zero, right? So this is kind of intuit intuitively defined, okay? So that's what's happened here. And also when you have limit, as x approaching negative infinity, it means that it's going to the left, okay? It's going to the left, to the here, to here. This means that it's also going to approach the horizontal asymptote, that is the y equals zero. So this will be also going to be zero. Now, some small theorem about this one over x we can write if, let me write r first. Let's say it's a rational number. Then limit as x approaching infinity, 1 over x with power of r is equal 0. And then if r positive rational number, such x with power of r define for all x.
Okay, in other words, uh, if the limit has or the x approaching infinity or negative infinity, the, the idea is uh, you have some functions that you need to simplify it and you need to find out whether they can be simplified in terms of 1 over x or no. Okay. So that, that's the idea. Okay. So in our case here, in the previous uh, illustration of the uh, question, that is, we need to make the limits. They will have this 1 over x. If the limit has the infinity, okay? So why? Because when we have this, we can we can get the idea that the limit is actually zero, and we can exchange this and replace with zero, and then the answer will be directly square root of three over four. Okay. So we can take this answer as square root of three over four. So, when you, when you understand the process, when you know that we will have the 1 over x inside of those equations, we can have a little bit of uh, faster, faster process when we look on just the question itself. Okay. If we look just the question itself, like I said, which one having the, the highest uh, power. It's, it's x squared. But x squared having square root is just x, the same as the bottom one. So we can directly say that. The answer is square root of 3 over 4. Okay, directly. So I, I don't mind the right directly, uh, uh, directly the answer. Uh, but it, it depends on the case whether you need to, uh, to um, explain or not. If it is just to find the limit, uh, find the value, or 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 um, prove whether it is doesn't exist, then you can write like uh, directly the number or explain why it doesn't exist. Okay. okay. Maybe if you'd like, we can take the uh, take the power. Four x minus one, right? Minus one, right? Okay. If you look here. This should be around here. Right? Is that square root of three over four? Let me take square root of three. Square root of three. Yeah, it should be 0 0.4. So it should be 0 0.43 should be, should be around here. Okay. okay, I think that's how it's done. Okay, uh, let me check. Um, okay, let me go another example and then we can go to some theorem okay the other one you have limit x x approaching infinity
Now the way we look this question or the limit is we think the limit as x approaching infinity and we are going to let's say we are having thought process that okay maybe we go check the limit as x approaching infinity we directly substitute here or oh, maybe it's, um, the infinity square and this is minus infinity well Sometimes, uh, if you don't know the concept, you can go by, okay, infinity squared or infinity squared, and then you have square root or probably infinity, and minus infinity will be zero. Sometimes, I, 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 I saw some students do, 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 do things like that. But again, let me remind you that uh, infinity is an abstract. not an exact value or exact number. How big it is, we cannot really measure. So if we try to measure and treat infinity like number or like uh, something that has limit, then it's not infinity, right? So the idea of being infinity is we cannot measure as in a number. So. What we are going to do here is precisely what we are going, uh, what we went before, or the idea is to get the idea of 1 over x. And the way we are going to do that, we look here and we see that this has square root, and then it's, it's let's say it has a one element here, and the other element here, and it has the minus sign. So probably we can try to re rationalize. Rationalize means that you can uh, you can multiply this with the opposite sign with of this all this element. So first is multiply with this plus x. Again, this is just some method, okay? Why we need to multiply with the opposite sign is because if we remember from the algebra, the idea behind when you have a minus b a plus b, you will get directly a squared minus b squared, right? Usually, if you have, let's say, um, a plus b squared, it is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. You have this 2ab in the middle, okay? So in, in algebra, the way we, why we need to multiply with the opposite sign is because we want to have the result as simple as possible without having this the middle form here. Okay. That's why we are multiplying this two. Okay. So we can multiply this and let's write limit as x approaching infinity. And then this will be x squared plus one. We remove this square root and then minus x squared. So perfectly, we can write like that. And then in the bottom, let's just write square root of x squared plus one plus x. And then we can simplify this with this. We cancel, cancel it, both of them. So we can write one over okay now what we are going to do again if we imagine the infinity here like we imagine when we are a plug in the infinity and if we know that for sure from this expression, 
we will be really, really high. Positive number, but with high, highest value, right? The highest value as possible. So we can conclude, or we can make some conclusion that one defined by something really big is just like one over x. So this will be conclude as zero. Okay. Well, accidentally, it's the same zero as we mentioned. If we try to take this inside and negative uh, infinity, negative infinity is zero. It's accidentally the same, but if you answer like that, then probably it's not really proven. So we could prove first and make sure that this is a, a true statement that saying that, okay, it should be really positive number here, and it's really, really large, and it will be equal to zero, okay? Well, yes? Well, what if, like, you divide all, like, the, all the, like, from the first equation, you just divide, like, by x, like, from the highest power? Um... You mean you multiply with x? Like, like, like you divide each thing by like the highest power, so like inside the oh, so the square root divided by like oh. x squared and like x like divided by x. Like, well, yeah. You mean uh, this divided by x squared yeah. like that, and then this also divided by x. x? Okay, first thing. Can we do this? Yeah. Yeah, it can. Why? Because the uh, x might be zero. Yes. So this is so every time we we have some 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 mathematic formula like the way we are doing in the beginning here. Because we are multiplying with the two sides, right? So it's actually, we can just close it, and it's still our function. But when we are dealing with this, we change the function, right? We change the function. So, so that's, that's how we are going to see it. And of course, x can be 0, so the function can be changed. Okay, so that's, that's it. So that's why we rationalize writing the rationalize like this, of course, with also the bottom one. Because actually, you don't want to change the meaning of the function. It's actually cancel, cancel, it's just one, right? It's just one. What we are going to do is we just want to modify the form, not changing the form. Okay. That's that's different. Okay. okay.
Oke, okay, ne- next slide. Uh, Okay, let's say this is y equal e to the x. Should be having a gap here, so let me erase a little bit. And let's say this is one, right? This is zero. This is y and x. Okay, when we are moving to the left, Meaning we are going to really large number. This will be equal limit as x approaching negative infinity of e with power of x. This will result in zero. Okay. So again, this uh, line here, y equals zero, is our horizontal asymptote. Okay, and the other example, if we have limit as x approaching uh, zero from the left, this is e, one over x. Okay, perhaps this is better if we look on the equations. Let me delete all this. This is E. And then E with power of 1 over X.
let me maybe it's negative x okay. I think better with the negative x now if we look here this one e to the x when you have x approaching to the left going infinity it's going to have an asymptote here although we cannot really see the gap okay. but there would there is an asymptote here and then when we have e with power of uh, one rack or uh, uh, negative uh, x we have if we going to look here this also having a horizontal asymptote here right which means that or okay or uh, if I try to take this approach and let some uh, maybe t is 1 over x okay as t approaching uh, negative infinity x is approaching 0 from the left okay so we can actually rewrite these equations in terms of t in instead of x so t and this will be e with power of t so it's the same the same uh, the same form, a similar form, and this is also equal to zero. And another note is if we have trigonometry, let's say limit as x approaching infinity of sine x. Okay. If we have sine, remember that uh, the trigonometry will have some oscillations right? it goes up and down all the time so because it's oscillate all the time periodi periodically this will be doesn't exist the limit doesn't exist because uh, values of sine x oscillate between 1 and negative 1.
Okay, I think that's uh, conclude uh, two point six. Okay, two point six. The limits at infinity. Okay, maybe another another uh, few that I want you to notice is let me delete this. Let me change to um, x squared. If you look here, uh, we have e to the x and x squared. If you look at how e is going uh, really high, right? And if we check with the uh, x squared, or maybe if we can look on maybe uh, I think maybe x cube is is uh interesting. And maybe uh Two, two, x. Maybe, maybe this one. Uh, it's it's much more. Uh, if we take some power function and some exponential, and if we look on how the exponential is. Having uh, it's going to when you, you when you um, when you start from here going up up and it's directly going up here right. If you look on the uh, power function, sometimes it's it's having uh, like for example the x squared it's it's having going to have some curvy here and going up. But it's 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 having some some gap, right? Some gap. And if you look from that perspective, you can see that the exponential one has really, really uh, faster when it's reaching the the highest value or the high value, right? Whether the power function like x squared or x cubed they have some certain gap, right? If we compare with the exponential, okay. and we will know how they uh, behave if we know uh, what is the relation with the slope of the uh, the tangent, okay. slope of the tangent, and that's uh, our uh, topics for this one. Okay. So let me go here, and we will have some derivative. the introductions of uh, derivative. Derivative, uh, a rate of change. Okay, so if we have a um, flat curve C as equations uh, y equal f of x.
Well, let me finish just the statement here first. So we want to find tangent line to curve at point, this point. And then we consider a nearby point Q that is x f of x. This is what we did at the very early limit where x is not equal a. Okay. Then the slope of second line pq is this. Maybe a short break. Okay. Short break for for a while. Okay. Uh, if we illustrate the graphs, okay. So let's say this is our uh, our function, and we have some points. Okay, that is P and Q, as mentioned in the uh, in the information previously then okay then what we are going to do is we let uh, by letting the point Q so we let let Q approach B okay along the curve C okay. so we let this point uh, approaching P a point Q approaching P along the curve C by letting the by letting x approaching a so as x approaching a here we also letting q approaching p okay and then if we know that this is the second line the second line m p q then the point, if we change the point, it will also change the line, right? The second line will be also changing, right? And it's, it's visualized if we have this, okay? If we have this, let me, let me just look on how it's changing. So if, if, let's say if the Q is from here, from the right side, we move the Q the left, or maybe if we uh, looking at this theta like this, and then it's going to have another, another one here, a bit here, and then eventually, when, when the Q is really close to P, maybe around here, then when when that happened, we can write down that. Uh, so tangent line to curve y equal f of x at point p a f of a is the line through p with slope that is m and we define this because q is getting closer to p we define with limit as x approaching a of f of x minus f of a divided x minus a and this will be our definitions of our tangent okay our tangent okay so how does this come from? This is comes from basically from the second line, the second line that we have here. But the second line, we changed one, uh, the, the point Q. We change it, we change, we change, and the second line was also changed. Change, 
came, came, and then it's going to be closer and closer and closer when it's close, uh, close enough, right? When it's close enough, maybe here, not really a P. We can use the, the concept of limit. So, actually what we are doing here is actually we are cutting the second line, but we are going to limit the x to the uh, number a, and getting close together, and we are doing with a limit pattern. And then we have a new definition here. So it's not a single line anymore. This is our tangent line. So our tangent line is actually our secret line, but we move closer to our point uh, that we are going to evaluate. So if we want to know the tangent line to the curve, we can use directly this, uh, this definition of limit. Okay. Now, uh, before before we move going forward or move forward to uh, concept of derivative, let me just get some uh, some concept right by using this uh, this uh, tangent line or tangent okay? or the slope of the tangent. Okay? Let's just say that we have an example of uh, y equal x squared. If we want to find uh, equations of tangent line to y equal x squared at 1, 1, okay, at coordinate 1, 1. So first, our functions is x squared, right? Our a is 1. Then our m will be limit as x approaching 1, our f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Okay. So before we learn more about derivative and uh, later concept, this is what, what, what's actually uh, are happening. So we are using the limit and then approaching x to 1 of x squared minus 1 and then x minus 1. So this is a, this is f of a, right? This is, we can, we can also uh, write, write with, with something like this. And then we can uh, simplify and evaluate. This becomes x plus 1, x minus 1, this is x minus 1. And we know that this is equal with limit of x plus 1, which concludes that it's equal to 2. Okay. But this is m, right? The slope, slope of the tangent. We need to find the tangent line. So we need to input this m into our equation of tangent line. Equation of tangent line, we can have y minus y1 slope x minus x1 our x1 and y1 is just 1 1 our point so y minus 1 2 x minus 1 or we have y equal to x minus 2 minus 1 okay And this is one of the typical typical questions in uh, in derivative. Usually, they will sometimes ask me, "What is the equation of the tangent line?" This is uh, our approach when we are just using limit. When we are just using limit. Later on, there will be some some several techniques in in, in derivative concept that might help when we are dealing with the uh, with the equation of the tangent line.
And I think the idea of derivative and how the slope is, is changing, I think aside from just a regular mathematics, I think it will help you to build a sense of engineering, sense of engineering. Whenever you deal with some graphs, whenever you deal with uh, some data set, and you know that if you can think that, that that data or that graph can be think as something that has changed, something that changing. You can you can thinking oh probably you can approach with uh, with with some some drift. How fast is the data is changing? How fast it will be uh, going to maybe decrease? How fast it's going to increase? Like in science, in engineering, or in uh, even in economics or biology even, you will you will have that, that sense, at least that sense. Okay. Although maybe not all concept in calculus really uh, applicable in all, uh, all things, but the sense on how you're doing it, the logic will be there, actually will be there. Okay. So this is the, uh, the, the tangent. Okay. If we try to, to zoom in what is really happen, let me check here. If this is the 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 parabola of y, y equal x squared, so let this let f is our x squared, and this is one 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 that we are actually uh, previously we calculated, right? So this is the, the curve, and if we try to zoom in this uh, this area here nearby this one one point, we look here and zoom in again. We look here, so really, really, maybe really, really close here. And we see that at the very close point nearby is 1, 1, we can see the straight line. So we can see some straight line here, which is our, our similar to our tangent. So another application for tangent is we can approximate some curve with a straight line if those numbers is nearby this point or nearby some point. So there, there is some section, linear approximation. Later we will do that. So we can take some uh, approximations. Okay. Okay, I hope you, if you want to, to write some notes here. Okay, another slide. Uh, let me just crop the picture. Another way to write down the previous uh, the previous formula or uh, equation is the same p and also q, but we are going to change the x with some a plus h. So this is actually the same with the previous one. This is x, but we change x with a plus h. So let me write here that is uh, x is actually a plus h here. So we are going to evaluate with a distance h. So all the x will be changing to a plus h, a plus h, right? A plus h of the axis. Then our uh, slope, or our, let me just write slope up, or, or second pq first. We can write this. Okay. And then as x approaching a, or in, in our case here, 
as x approaching a, h is approaching 0, right? And the expressions become, the, this, the, the second become, we move the q, the same thing what we did before, this will have a limit, as h approaching 0, of the function a plus h minus f of a over h. This is another way to, to write. Okay. So either way, this one or the previous one, uh, you can use um, uh, which one you prefer. It depends on you. And sometimes some, uh, some an analytical questions, maybe they may be easier to think like here, or maybe easier the previous one. It's the same, same uh, formula. The connection is just this. X is H plus H. Or H is X minus A, Now, if we think this as in physics, the velocity, okay, we can also write, uh, let's say the average velocity is our displacement over time, right? Or this is the same as if we take the the same functions before, a plus h minus f of a divided by h. Okay. But of course, it has some, some interval, right? Some interval that is uh, h. This is our interval. Let's say this is our, our time. So if we take the shorter interval, so we move our x going to be closer to a, and we move, then we move the point going to be uh, closer to our b, then, uh, oh, let, let me write here. Um, so letting h approaching zero, or uh, compute the average velocity over a shorter interval. Then we can define the instantaneous velocity as we defined uh, previously in the in the ball that we uh, release and we compute the uh, the velocity. So we will have the idea of the instant, instantaneous velocity. So the velocity at exact time a, or at t equal a. So we define that the velocity will be limit as h 
going to be zero. So this will be instantaneous velocity. Uh, let the FT be a, a position or distance, distance function. Maybe just this, and this will be instantaneous velocity at uh, t equal a. Maybe that will be better to understand. And then this type of limit, the, the slope that we are uh, evaluate, we computed before, they will always appear, this form or the previous form, they will always appear in all, in all that have the rate of change. Okay? And eventually, you can say that this is actually the derivative. We can say this, the, the velocity is derivative of the position function or the distance, right? And in physics. So this form, uh, let me write, limit h closer to zero. The, the, the limit forms appear whenever we calculate rate of change. And since it is appearing uh, in so many um, many subjects, we give the terms derivative. So the derivative of a function, let's say function f at a number a, And we denote this with f, with an ac one accent here, f prime. We can say that, or derivative of f a, is limit as h approaching zero, of our function a plus h, minus f of a, defined by h. So this is the, the first definition of, of the derivative. Or maybe let me write the the two forms that uh, simultaneously here. If we let the x is a plus h, we can also write the derivative. Okay. 
So we define the derivative as a concept from the slope of a tangent in in in, in terms of limit. Okay, now if we uh, let's say we have um, f of x is x squared minus 8x plus 9. Let's say find the derivative at x equal 2. Okay. Now before we using the the power rule of uh, power formula to to get the derivative. Let's try using the limit, okay, just limit form by limit definitions. This is f prime two equal limit as h going to be zero. This will be f two plus h minus f two. We can write down limit h, and this will be f uh, f two plus h, so two plus h squared minus eight two plus h plus nine, and f two will be. Let me check here. F two is four minus sixteen plus nine. It's minus three, so minus minus three this is four plus two h plus h square this is negative sixteen h this is plus three so we will have Four plus also plus plus four h plus h squared minus sixteen minus eight h plus nine plus three. So we have h squared minus four h, and this will be cancelled out, right? So nine plus three is. 12, 12 plus 4 is 16, minus 16 is 0. So all this will be canceling each other. And this will be the result. And we can take this. And canceling this h. And this will be resulting h minus 4 or minus 4. Okay, that, that is how we, we are doing in, in terms of limit, in terms of limit. Okay, if we check the using the same concept but at x equals some any number a okay. we are getting This will be equal to uh, a plus h squared minus eight plus nine minus eight 
a squared minus 8a plus 9. And we solve this, and this will turns out to be a limit to a h plus h squared minus 8h divided by h. And this will turns out to be and this will be equal zero for h, then this will be 2a minus 8. And this is precisely the same as uh, before, if we take a equal 4, if a e equal 4, then 2, uh, or, or 2, let me, let me just 2 here. If a equal 2, then this will be 2 multiplied by 2 minus 8. This will be equally the same value as, as previously calculated. And because of we already define the derivative as the the same the same meaning as the tangent or the slope of the tangent, we can say that the tangent line okay to equation y equal f of x at point at a and f of a is the line through a of f of a whose slope is equal to f prime of a. which means that the tangent line will be, uh, we can write in the terms of these terms.
Okay. Uh, let me move to the next slide. Let me take this uh, function. Let's draw the function. Okay, let's say that's that's our uh, our graph. But let me just make it more smooth. Maybe that that's our function. So let's take this y equal f of x, and let's check the slope, okay, for this y equal f of x. Let's check uh, maybe this is zero, and maybe this is maybe one, and maybe two here. Maybe that's just for illustration. So if you look here, we know that the function is decreasing here, and then decreasing, and then decreasing one more time, right? So what we are going to do now is we need to at least predict how the uh, the rate of change or the slope if we take some some small uh, line, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here. We know that this line has the slope of negative slope, right? Negative slope. So negative slope, it, it's, it's going to be increasing. It's going to be more horizontally, right? And sometimes, and some, some, at some interval here, it, it's going to have a zero. And at this exact point, the slope becomes a zero, right? Okay. And then let's, let's still move. Let's still move from here, going here, going up, going up, going up. Okay. Let me. Right, this is the slope. Uh, the slope here, slow, is negative, right? Okay, and here is slope is positive. But if you look closely, if you look closely, it's going to increase, 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 but then it's going to have some slightly declining. Like bit funny, and it's actually de decreased, but it's not in a negative way. It's still positive, but it's decreasing, and then going to have zero here, right? So slope is positive, but sometimes here it's slope declines, but still, still positive, right? Still positive. And maybe here, I maybe write slope is increase, but still negative. Okay. If, you, if you can see the the the, uh, the changing, and then at some point here, we have the slope is equal zero. Okay. Let me just uh, go through. Another, another, let me just continue this line going down here and then take another line and take this is one, this is two. Okay. Okay, so if we going to make a graph of y equal f prime x, the derivative from our uh, f of x, okay? So we start from this, post, this 
this uh, interval that is the slope is negative, right? Which means if we are going to draw f prime at this interval, we have to start from negative. Negative means we start from from below here. It's negative, right? And then we are going to have the derivative that is zero or slope that is zero. Okay. So I think uh, my suggestion is usually if you draw, make sure you point out the zero first because that is exactly when your graph will have graph crossing the zero. Right? So we can take this. Uh, Let me make it a little bit uh, a bit of it there. Okay. okay. And then take the let's say zero is here. Okay, I hope my drawing is good enough. Okay, I think zero here. And then another zero maybe around here. And then we can start from, um, let me change the color, maybe green. We can take maybe from here, this is just an illustration, okay? But if, they, if the questions is asking in terms of exact positions, they will give you some information and you need to use those informations and make it logical in, in the graphs. Okay. But but let me just illustrate what, what's going to look like. So maybe it's going to have like this. Crossing that point. And then by looking this this interval here is going to somewhere here. And then it is going positive, 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 still positive. But it's going to decline, but still positive. We later we know that is we have second derivative. But let's say the changing is around in the middle here. So let us let's say that that's uh, our uh, our point here. Let's transform this and take this into maybe around here. So it's going to be there. And then it's decreasing. And then decreasing up until there. And then decreasing until, until equal 0. And then after that, still, if we look here, it's still decreasing. Decreasing, 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 and then maybe a little bit of uh, decrease, but they here is increase, but it's still negative. So maybe, uh, maybe around here, there's another point that is actually maybe our our uh, extreme point will be here. Okay, so from this idea on how we can transform or find or at least predict, okay, predict pre our predictions. Okay. So our predictions of the derivative of the uh, f of x at least we know how to transform the slope that is negative and the slope that is zero and the slope that is positive to our graph. And how we can check whether this is correct or not. We can check that is if we take this some interval up until when the slope is zero, we need to check that this is slope is zero. This is still negative, right? Still negative? Let me write here. This is negative, this is positive, right? Positive value of, of y. Right? 
And then after the slope zero is positive, right? And then some some somewhere here it's going to be zero again and then negative. So you, at least you can you can assume or predict how how it looks like. So if I give you some some graph and uh, maybe you can uh, you can imagine how the derivatives will be or what's the interval for for the uh, for. A function that is decreasing, function that is increasing, you can at least imagine how it looks like. Okay. Before we learn how to sketch the curve formally later in chapter three. Okay, okay let's uh, continue a little bit, just a little bit. So this is um, assumption. Maybe next Friday I will give you more some uh, functions that we can assume or predict the derivatives. Let me write some other notations that uh, you can think and maybe you still remember. So the derivative we can write as y prime, f prime, or we can write as terms dy over dx can also write in terms of df over dx, still the same meaning. Or we can write d dx and then uh, y or f of x is also okay. Or we can write d f of x or d x f of x. But this the one the, the last two is usually right in terms of later part on uh, partial derivatives that will be the calculus two. So maybe the first line here is much more commonly used. Okay. And we can also write in terms of uh, dy over dx, and then we write x equal a, which means we are evaluating x equal a in our dy over dx. Okay. So which means this is uh, evaluate at okay. Okay, some definitions on the uh, different dif derivative or differentiation. Just an introductions. Let me just write, and then we can continue in, in the next Friday. A function f is differentiable at a if the f prime a exists. It is differentiable at uh, open interval, let's say AB or 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 all interval like that. If it is differentiable at every number in the interval. Okay. Okay, the next time we will continue from, from here. Okay. This is a theorem to to determine whether the function is is differentiable or not so the the, the functions need to be uh, determined so if we 